Cash flow. Appreciation. A lot of people from California come here to invest in cash flow. They're like, screw appreciation. We got that in Cali, but we can't afford it. We just want to come to Cleveland for cash flow. I challenge you to want more. I challenge you to get cash flow and appreciation. And guess what? I got a deal right now that will do that. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. This show is for Trisha and her husband. I like these folk. Salt to the earth, that's what I've been saying in all your videos, Trisha. You're a teacher. Your husband's a firefighter. That's good blue-collar work. I like that. I'm a blue-collar guy. My dad, truck driver. My grandpappy, also a truck driver, right? Don't come from the millions, but I made my millions in real estate, doing smart stuff. And I got some smart stuff for you. I got some stuff that's good. And Trisha, this is very important for you because you definitely come from the land of appreciation, SoCal. But you guys can't afford to invest in SoCal on your salaries, your modest blue-collar salaries. That's cool. Love it. You could definitely afford to invest in anything you want out here in the Cleveland market, though, because we got a lot of stuff. It's really freaking cheap. And what you've been focusing on thus far is only cash flow. I think you've been blinded by the cash flow, Trisha. Blinded. Blinded so much that you've been looking at some garbage, garbage properties, right? Those properties are so cheap, not because they're in Ohio, just because they're in, like, the horrible ghetto, really. I mean, let's be honest. Like, you've looked at some of the crappiest houses I have ever seen, right? And you're blinded by that cash flow, and it's really phantom cash flow, honestly. I don't think there's any scenario, Tricia, where you're going to buy those and you're going to be able to hire a team equipped to manage those where they make money and you make money. It's not possible, right? Just don't – I don't see it happening for you, right, because the big companies like my company – we don't even like to manage properties like that. They're just so crappy. It's not worth our time. It's not worth the money you're willing to pay us, and there's just not enough meat on the bone. You should really leave those properties to the locals that really know the neighborhoods, really know the market, and can actually get economies of scale with sweat equity, right? Like people that do good in those neighborhoods are uh, like contractors that are in the area, local guys, right, that you need to keep your team of guys working through the winter and through downtime so you have them work on your own houses. Or like a guy, uh, one of the court-appointed movers that does the move-out inspection uh, – uh, the sorry – the move outs after evictions in Cleveland, right? If you guys watch my show, Tenants from Hell Show, uh, we like to uh, film tenants' evictions, right? If you are a tenant at Holton Wise and you don't pay rent, uh, no questions asked, we will throw your ass on the street. And of course, we will video it and put it on the internet for millions of people to watch, right? So, hey, if you're thinking about hiring property managers, folks, some people go, oh my God, I can't believe Holton Wise would film someone's eviction. Yeah, guess what, bro? Evictions are like jail, okay? It needs to punish the offender, and it needs to uh, have future offenders, discourage future offenders from offending, right? So if you know if you don't pay rent to Holton Wise, you're getting evicted, and we're going to plaster your face in front of millions of people, guess what you do more often than not? You pay your rent to Holton Wise, okay? Think about that, right? Now, <clears throat> One of the guys, you've probably seen him and his crew on some of our shows. He has a lot of properties in the hardcore ghetto. But he's a hardcore dude, and he's the guy that does evictions, so he gets a lot of economy of scale, right? So for you, Trisha, being in SoCal, I don't see you making the money he makes. I just don't see it happen, and I see you losing money, right? So I've been trying to give you better stuff to look at. And today, today I'm giving you something that's going to achieve the cash flow that you came here for, but it's also going to have some appreciation because we're talking about the hottest neighborhoods. We're talking about the gentrified neighborhoods. So this, Trisha, is you getting more. You came here for cash flow. You left California's appreciation. I want you to have them both. And before I show you how to get them, I need to let everybody else know who's watching your show. If this sounds awesome, I need you guys to do a couple things. Number one. Put down your iPhone, wipe the Cheeto dust off your face, hit the subscribe button. Number two, 
because you got to keep watching because I'm giving you freaking gold. Number two, though, if you want to get involved in the game like Trisha, you want to work with me, you want to make sure I don't let you buy garbage, and you want to invest in solid properties, make some money, work your way up to millionaire status maybe. Who knows? Maybe you're just looking for a small side hustle. I don't know what your goals are. That's why you got to do what I'm about to tell you to do, and that's send an email to my team with your phone number. We'll hop on the phone with you, talk to you about your goals, and I'll work with you one-on-one -on -one in an ever-involving fashion and get you put together, get you on your way like Trisha. Uh, you can also click the show notes below for a link to book that free call. Now, on to you, Trisha. Of course, this is being sent to you privately. All the other Joe Schmoes out there that are watching this on Holton Wise TV, they can't buy this house, right? So nobody call us like, oh, my Franklin. I sent it to Trisha months ago, bro. I only put it on Holton Wise TV when it's not for sale anymore. So it's literally not for sale. To like, I'm talking to everybody who's not Trisha. This is not for sale. You can't buy it. I want you to learn from it. And if you want to work with me, we'll get you another one. Or if you want something a little different, we'll get you that too, right? So I'm done. No more pitching. Commercial, Trisha, I'm going to give you some gold. I want you to get more cash flow and appreciation. Let's go. Welcome back, folks. This, this property has me excited. What we're talking about today has me thrilled, right? People come to this market, to the Cleveland market, to work with me because they want cash flow, right? They can't get the cash flow in expensive places, right? California, Canada, New York, Oregon, right? Cash flow is tough, right? But traditionally, you invest in those markets for appreciation. And then markets like mine, Mike Cleveland, like Detroit, like Memphis, like Indianapolis. These are markets, Milwaukee, that are typically looked at as your cash flow markets. You don't go there for appreciation. You go there for cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, right? And that's the correct assessment. I am not on the show telling anybody out there that Cleveland is like the appreciation <laughs> destination of the world. It's not, okay? It's not in the Sun Belt. It's in the Midwest, right? Traditionally speaking, you're not going to see major population growth in the Midwest. It's not how it works, right? Uh, so it will never be an appreciation market. That said, there are areas of the air of the Cleveland market that you can get appreciation. And I'm sure that's the same for all those other turnkey markets I mentioned. But, like, I'm here in Cleveland, and I've sold $200 million worth of real estate in Cleveland. So we're going to focus on what I'm an expert on in a deal right here that highlights all of that, okay? I like this deal for many, many reasons. 6911 Franklin Boulevard, Cleveland, 44102. It's been on the market for 34 days, and it's overpriced. It's overpriced, but we're going to work on that. 495k this is in like one of the hottest friggin neighborhoods you can get in cleveland like dude this is where you want to be we're doing like luxury airbnbs and we could possibly maybe one day turn this into an airbnb double up that return probably uh but i i prefer right now we're sticking with just single family airbnbs right and i don't want to turn it into a situation where we turn like one unit into an airbnb and then long-term tenants in the rest i think that would be problematic but the idea is out there. But what we're talking about right here is Detroit Shoreway. This is like one of the most badass neighborhoods in Cleveland, right? When people talk about resurgence of Cleveland and they talk about the happening things, the gentrification, right? The neighborhoods those are happening in, the biggest neighborhoods in Cleveland, Edgewater, Detroit Shoreway, Ohio City, Tremont. One, two, three, four. Those are the four on the west side. And then if you cruise over to the east side, you also got some – some gnarly areas, right? University Circle, totally gnarly. And then you got, uh, I got to zoom in a little bit so you can see it, but Little Italy, right next to University Circle. Like this this whole little, all this jazz. I mean, University Circle has got their own police force. I mean, that's this is all good stuff too, right? So if you're on the east side, it's those two. If you're on the west side, it's the ones I mentioned, right? 
And they're doing a lot of stuff in these neighborhoods to make gentrification happen, right? They're doing tax abatements on new construction, right? People are getting 15-year tax abatements, right? You buy a crummy house, tear it down, build a new house, you don't pay taxes on it for 15 years. They're forcing that stuff because they want this gentrification. So the city's like behind these neighborhoods. And because of that, we're seeing huge, huge increases in property values, right? You can buy single-family new construction homes in this neighborhood for like $500,000, $600,000, dollars $800,000 right now, right? So if you're going to invest in Cleveland, you're doing so for the cash flow. But if you want to hop on an appreciation train, you need to be in a path of progress neighborhood. You need to be in an area like this where there's things popping, right? Ain't nobody building new construction housing in the C-grade neighborhoods of Cleveland, right? If you guys watch my show for any period of time, we do a lot of Section 8 investing, okay? A lot of it, right? Like, old Brooklyn's a popular neighborhood, like all these like areas where you can buy duplexes for like 100K, right? Those are not areas right now that people are building new construction homes, right? These are those areas, right? So if you're really trying to pop upon the appreciation bandwagon, these are the proven neighborhoods. Now, with that said, though, Clark Fulton, the Metro Health area, I think that's going to be the next one because there's a lot of money coming into there. There's like billions of dollars going into there. Uh, Metro Health is doing a billion dollars. Transit Authority just did like another 60 million or something. So like, and that borders. It's just south of all these neighborhoods that have already like hit the the mark with five hundred thousand dollar houses, right? So areas like this, you already get huge rents, high quality tenants. That neighborhood, in my opinion, is the next one on the way right so here what we have here this is a very good opportunity it's a four unit apartment building four unit apartment buildings are my favorite type of investment of all time because the financing is so butter ah! financing man that's why i like real estate as an investment vehicle dude like first of all like, I don't, like, love real estate, like, just in general of, like, I mean, I love real estate, but, like, I don't love it because, like, I love houses, and I'm just like, oh, my God, look at the architecture, and I want to, like, hug this fucking house like I care, right? now. I love real estate because it's an investment vehicle, right? But if I thought I could make more money uh, doing something else, I would do that, right? But with real estate, what really attracted me to real estate was you can work your day job and invest in real estate, right? You could do it part-time. You could do it passively. You could do it out of state, right? Hard to do. A lot of other businesses like that. And then the financing. You put down a quarter. The bank puts down three quarters. And they let you take that for 30 years. Fixed interest, low interest. Greatest financing in the world. But that's the thing with that financing. There's two downsides. It's residential financing where you do 25. Bank does 75. And you get 30 years to pay it down. The two downsides are you only get 10 of those, number one. Number two, it's got to be on single-family homes, duplexes, triplexes, quads. So if you're putting the math together in your head, that means the quad is the biggest building you can get with the amazing financing. Once you go to a five unit, your financing sucks. It's terrible. Uh, it's not good, right? I mean, it's not like the end of the world, right? But if you haven't exhausted 10 mortgages, there'd be no reason to do some crummy financing with like a five-year uh, call, like a 25-year AM variable rate interest rate and down payments with the way pricing is in 2021 of probably like 40 to 65% down. Like, screw that. 25% down 30 years. That's where it's at, baby. Right here. So, love that. And uh, what this is, this is a long-time landlord. Long time. He's owned this thing for a long, long, long time. Bought it before the neighborhood was popping. Before you could buy houses for half a million, six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars. This dude bought it, ran it as like a low-income property, right? For freaking ever, okay? He's got one vacant unit, and then he's got a bunch of low-income tenants in there. I'm going to go over the market rents and the current rents here momentarily. This thing is something that he, like, ran back when this was like a C-grade neighborhood lower than that, right? Now it's basically an A-grade neighborhood, right? So I think this thing is going to even continue to project up based on all the government incentives uh, to get new houses built, right? All them yuppies that are coming in, right? So there's all your photos. But even though every photo you saw was empty, three of the units are currently occupied. And this dude, just old timer, ready to get out of the business, retire. <laughs> He's got month to month tenants in there paying five fifty, nine fifty, and then he's got one in there till April paying eight fifty, right? Now, here's what market rents are right now, today. The two ones, twelve fifty all day. The one ones, one thousand all day. So forty five hundred, 
54k, right? Of that 54k, I anticipate you spending approximately 23 uh, 275 to pay my team to manage this for you and all your normal expenses, fixed and variable expense estimates. You got to pay taxes, you got to pay insurance, people break stuff, people move out. Uh, evictions don't really happen in neighborhoods like this very often, but they do happen in the business, so we account for all that, right? So pure profit, 30725 Now, as far as price goes, I think he's still overpriced. This is definitely worth more than 500 k He's got it at 495 It's worth more than 500 k if you got the market rents. But dog. You don't got the market rents, dude. You got like your your long time, old time tenants that uh, they're paying like, you know, rents that they should have been paying 30 years ago, right? Like, come on, bro. You got somebody in there paying 550, dude. Like, you could have rented this for 550 in like probably 1990, right? Uh, so because of that, it's not worth over 500 today, and I don't think it's worth 495. I think we could pick it up 450, 450. Now one of the units is empty, so we're gonna drop 20 G's into that right off the rip. Get somebody in there paying market rent. The other three tenants, I say we slowly work them up, right? The person paying five fifty, obviously that's the biggest one. Get them up. The people paying nine fifty and eight fifty, we don't need to like freak out, right? Shouldn't be in a rush to drop another twenty k in their units, right? Because you saw the pictures; those were not high end. We need them to be high end, right? So we want to get the empty unit. That's where we do. That's what we focus on first. We get that one renovated. We get that one ready to rock. Bring in max rent. And then the other ones we work on slowly. We want the money continually coming in, not going out. Don't get me wrong. I don't mind when you guys wire like twenty, forty, sixty, eighty thousand dollars out to Cleveland uh, for my team to do renovations, but like you need to be paid yourself, right? So it makes no sense to remove income streams, right? Keep collecting that rent. And eventually we might be able to get them up to market rent just based on the location because uh, of how nice it is and how desirable it is without even having to do those turns, right? There's turnovers in the real estate business, right? And they're expensive. So you want to mitigate those as much as possible. Never create artificial turnovers, right? So assuming we can get the other three people up to market rent, which may or may not happen, right? It's possible. Uh, it's unlikely we get all three up to market rent without at least one turnover. It's also, in my opinion, unlikely we have to turn over all three of those units to get them to market rent. I think, you know, maybe like one or two will deflect or the other way, right? So if <clears throat> we do do that, though, right, we'd be looking at a total investment of 470 k 132 and a half out of your pocket. That's 112 for the DP. Down payment, for those of you at home who are not following my abbreviation there. DP, down payment, not double penetration. That's not what we talk about on this show, folks. No, that's another show. Anyway, 112500 for the down payment, 20 k in those upfront repairs. That should project you out to a 10.3% cash on cash return. 7 cap, making a clear cash flow after mortgage, 13649 You're paying 17900 and I just crossed off that number by circling it. I don't know. You're paying almost eighteen grand to the bank, but that's really going back in your pocket, right? So that's like equity, right? So you got your cash flow. You got your equity. You got $337,000 of a loan that them tenants are paying for you, plus the cash flow, plus you're in one of the hottest neighborhoods in town, which in my opinion, if anything's appreciating, it's the area where they're tearing down low-income housing at a rapid pace and building freaking five, six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollar single family homes. Folks, do the math. You're insane if you don't pick this up, not to mention it's the biggest building you can get with the best financing there is. And if I can get you that forty five thousand dollar discount off a of list price, we in the money. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.